Now, Kohl's, it's funny. Um, I have been saying that Kohl's should not have gone down with Macy's. Uh, there is a fantastic piece in the street today, an interview with the former CEO of Sears Canada about how Eddie Lampert wrecks Sears. Uh, and in it, he says that Kohl's overextended itself. I disagree with that. I think Kohl's has preserved its balance sheet. It bought back, it had 270 million shares five years ago. Now it's 170 million. It's a very active buyback right now. It's got a 6% yield and it has a fantastic rock solid balance sheet. Now, I think that they're conservatively run and they would not want to do this go private. But again, this is just talk, speaking to the idea, have we gotten too negative on the banks? Have we gotten too negative on retail? Those are the two areas other than oil. And I believe, by the way, and I'm saying this, and I will talk about this next week, on our conference call with Action Alerts people on Wednesday at 12 o'clock, that oil at 43 is beginning to represent some uh, a bit of a buy. And now why is that? Because at 43, they will start capping the wells at the Permian that they have the drilled. So even though I still expect the Baker Hughes rig count to go up, I can make and craft a case that oil stocks will begin to bottom right here. We have told people no, 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 even though we have exposure to definitely too much. But I feel that we are getting to that level. Carly Garner, who has been dead right, real money, fantastic technician, says 43 is probably it. And I am saying 45, 43, not that much different stocks could bottom ahead. So what I'm looking at, I'm crafting a thesis that there are the three most hated groups, oil, financials, retail, attempting to stabilize. That's, of course, different from what I said yesterday with the 15 growth stocks. Attempting to stabilize would be a trade. The 15 growth stocks are not a trade. They're investments. All right, we can't wait for that action alert. It's called next week. Yeah, and you know, look, I put a huge amount in it. I'm also going to talk about Trump, some personal experiences with Trump, huh. uh, and, and the notion of, given those personal experiences, how you have to be a little more flexible in what you might own. And I'm going to save that for the call so people sign up. And that's, is it a tease? I spend so much time on the call. All I can tell you is, is that I'm doing it in the same um, intent that I have when I ran my hedge fund. Although we're not running a hedge fund, the intent is the same personal, uh, interactive. Remember, we do have an unbelievable uh, mobile site too. Uh, and I am going to reveal some things that make me feel a little less certain about the market overall. Uh, some of it is reflected in your excellent round table yesterday. Congratulations, Thank Thank that was so fantastic. Much. These round tables, the features that we're bringing are really the pastiche. I go on Twitter and so often people say, well, Jim, what do you think of X? What do you think? Well, I mean, the round tables, uh, the action alerts bulletins and, and our, 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 our calls, once a month calls, these questions are answered repeatedly and we can't just continue to respond on Twitter, 140 characters, when we can go an expansive round table, an expansive uh, interchange with our uh, uh, with our subscribers and hopefully new subscribers and our endless bulletins. Why? Because we know what you want and we want you want to hear us on oil you want to hear us on banks and you certainly want to hear us on retail those are three areas that I think are getting oversold and the Nordstrom is a classic example of how the family says we're too oversold mm -hmm.